You're watching Access Minnesota. Here's Jim Dubois. Tom Osmond runs the website TC Media Now. It's a repository of historic footage from Twin Cities Television. Tom, welcome to Access Minnesota. Thanks for having me here. Tom, what gave you the idea to start TC Media Now? Well, YouTube came out about six, seven years ago, and I think the original intent of YouTube was to put home movies on, on YouTube, but I noticed that a lot of uh, national programming and a lot of commercials, a lot of vintage programming was going on YouTube, and I had a pretty large collection of myself that I'd acquired over the years, so I started putting a few things on YouTube that got a lot of hits. And I thought, well, why not try something centered on the Twin Cities and do my own project? And three years ago, did uh, tcmedianow.com, and uh, three years later, probably 500 hours of video um, from all depths of uh, the Twin Cities, basements, garages, and back alleys. So what got you started in collecting classic video clips? Well, I've always loved TV and always loved media, and also uh, history, whether it be about my own family's history or the history of um, our government, the history of our state, and uh, a lot of, from my generation and, and you know, before, history was on TV, on, you know, not even the newspaper generation. You know, we, you know, what we remember about what happened in you know, the world in the world or what happened even, you know, the next town over, that came through TV. And to um, you know, relive those moments, whether it be the Twins uh, World Series victory or that, you know, 1986 tornado over Fridley, um, I want to be able to have people to provide an opportunity for people to be actually be able to see that again and actually live that same way they did before. Now on your site, TC Media Now, you have newsca newscast clips from the Twin Cities going back uh, to the mid-1970s, a, a scene tonight from WCCO-TV, Vintage 1975. If you compare the content and the presentation of those news shows to what we see today, what are some of the differences that you see? Well, some things are the same, some things are different. Uh, what I, I found is very different is there's a higher volume of stories in a half hour of, of news content. Uh, shorter stories, um, just more locally based, uh, less probably national feeds, and less um, infotainment. Again, it was you know fewer choices in that day. You had four channels, probably two channels this town that are really doing you know hard news. So you didn't have the competition you have today with 200 channels, and we also weren't clicking. We had to go up to that TV and change the dial. Now back some 35 years ago, how important were the newscasts and the personalities in the newscasts, the reporters, the anchors, the weather people, uh, the sports anchor, in defining the personality of the television station? I think they did a lot, and if you recall correctly, I mean, they were the face of the station. Uh, we didn't have uh, all-day cable news channels. We didn't have, you know, we had a morning paper. But an afternoon paper, and you know we weren't. There was no tweeting. There was no texting. Um, you know, even satellite television had not even you know developed in the 70s and early 80s. So really, by five o'clock, uh, which was actually a new newscast, five o'clock was a pretty new concept even in the 80s. Uh, that was where the first news you know, came about. And whether it be a Dave Moore or a Ron Majors or Stan Turner, that's where your that's where your station's identity came from as your your news product. Uh, you know, the news was part of a complement of the overall uh, station's committed through programming or through um, its national affiliation. And, uh, you know, many people relied on that person to, you know, break down what happened today and tell me about it in a half hour. Do you think it's accurate to call the anchors and personalities of newscasts that day true stars in their own right, at least on a local basis? I think a lot of them wouldn't want to be called stars, but, but they were. Um, sometimes you, uh, you know, you, you, you start to do something and you end up becoming something that you didn't plan to. And I think that, uh, you know, reading Dave Moore interviews and knowing people that knew him, um, he'd never say that, you know, he's a star, he's a star of this, this program. In fact, he would probably say he was overpaid for, you know, reading what he was doing. But he was trusted, and, um, you know, people rely on that trust. People, you know, Minnesotans are very habit-forming. You know, when they find a station they like, it's, it's tough to break that. And you can see even in, in a ratings the past 20 years, um, you know, it takes a lot of change in a station for people to move that dial. What was it about Dave Moore or Bob Ryan or some of the other big news personalities of the 60s and 70s that made them so memorable to Minnesotans? So I think that TV is consistent. You always have Dave Moore coming into your room, your homes five days and nights a week. Um, I think as in the 60s and 70s when women started working or other people started working, um, we may not even rely on our own family being home every night, but you always had Dave Moore, you always had Bob Ryan, you always had Ron Majors. They're there every night. Uh, Bud Kraling or you know whoever else was there to tell you what's going on. Um, above all else, they're there. 
Tell us about the collection of material that you've been able to find. Is it pretty difficult to find video material that predates, say, 1970? No, predating even 1979 is tough, um, only because uh, you know commercial VCRs weren't available. And even people in the industry, because tape was so expensive, you know, whether it be Umatic tape or even two-inch tape, um, it, it was t it, you know no one was squirreling it away. They weren't you know collecting uh, hundreds of tapes. Uh, even when the VCRs first came out, the tapes were about 30 bucks, and you didn't you just didn't tape things just to tape them. Luckily, some did, and that's why my collection um, has been able to s survive as long as it has. Um, but it is tough, and anything in the 70s that I can find is is an asset. And um, yeah, lo lo locally here, I go to people that were in the industry to find see what they have, and I say check your garages and check your basements because you're bound to have some. As a historian. Does it bother you that television didn't do a better job of preserving its local history? I do, and I, I question even in the digital age with the amount of um, avenues we have to preserve it that we're still, you know, we're not doing it still. Um, I think that every day, and I, I know this because many collections I have were about to go to the dumpster or to me. Um, so every day, I, you know, when I run into people that have stuff, and either they've just thrown it away or they're about to throw it away, and. People also, and this goes through anyone that had a VCR, we never label things the right way. And you put something in there and you let it roll for six hours or three hours, and a lot of what I find was never intended to be recorded. It was it rolled after that late movie, or someone was taping their own resume reel, and after that tape there was some B footage of another event which was very important to Minnesotans. Now, if one of our viewers happens to know of or stumble across a secret stash of vintage uh, videotapes or 16 millimeter film of Minnesota television, how can they get that material to you? Email me at tom at tcmedianow.com or go straight to my website and there's a contact link on my website and I welcome all opportunities uh, to check out what you have. Well, Tom Osmond, thank you so much for joining us on Access Minnesota. Thank you. That's all for this edition of Access Minnesota. Please join us again next month. Thanks for watching. Access Minnesota, issues that matter to you. Join us again next week as we bring you the newsmakers and stories that shape our everyday lives. Access Minnesota is produced by the Minnesota Broadcasters Association in cooperation with the University of Minnesota's College of Liberal Arts.